And they're like, no one. Can you train for this? <laughs> yes, actually there's entire degrees in part of all around this. It's pretty much the equivalent of getting your bachelor's of science in programming. Um, and you're not trained to manage. Um, that's very important. If you want to go on the leadership scale, and there are leaps, there are very severe leaps, and there's a hard reason. So as we all think about managers that we hated throughout our career, what happened was it wasn't that person was a bad person. They had no training, they didn't know what to do, so they just fell back on their bad habits. Because if nobody tells us what to do habit, we just automatically reject the bad ones. Entrepreneurship training. I meet a lot of people, they talk about the product, 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 and I say, well, which business plan? And they go, my product. That's not a business plan. So we're going to talk about how to be an entrepreneur, what are the things you need to focus on, how do you differentiate, who do you ask to be a mentor, that kind of stuff. Um, this is resource and connection. This is a really big one. You know, some people are going to have a B2B, that's business to business, sorry, uh, entity. And they're going to be a service provider, you know, someone who provides 30 second or 60 second clips. That's really important. Think about the number of people in this room who could potentially use that. You know, if you want to do a Kickstarter campaign, you need to have a sweet video. And if you don't have a sweet video and you don't have access to an artist because you haven't yet figured out basic networking, you need to hire somebody. And you're going to have to pay a couple grand for that. And that's an upfront business cost. You know what? That couple grand can get you 50000 to 100000 to a million dollars in funding based on the video alone. Because that will go up on YouTube and that will become viral. Video is very important. But that's a service provider. That's business to business. We're really getting contractors. You know, if someone has a business and they are nothing but contractors, we need to help them find their next set of clients, whether it's within the incubator or without. Or maybe we're graduating somebody who's providing something like that. We also need to provide constructive feedback. Um, I've been part of a couple of startups, and the worst thing is to get this, go make some revenue and we'll invest in you. <laughs> what that really means is your product sucks and I don't want to tell you. <laughs> That's really what it means. If someone says go make some revenue and then we'll invest, it means your product sucks, there's something wrong with your business plan, but I'm not, I don't have the guts to tell you. And I think what it is, there's a lot of business reasons, there's a lot of brand reasons, and that's not what we're going to be about. We're going to say, listen, you assessed your product, we think you're missing a few pieces here, we've given you your assessment, go fix it, you know? Because I really want to see people who can take constructive feedback. I mean, anybody who's been a developer for a long time understands one thing. The customer is always right because they're the dude with the dollar. And if you don't have lots of people with lots of dollars, you're out of business real fast and you're just looking for a job. And this is about entrepreneurship. And of course, the last thing is we're going to be a seed investor. You know, free space is not free. Somebody's got to pay for that. If you've got a five person team for a year, you're looking at about 20 grand. That's a $20,000 investment just to have a place to sit so everybody can get together and collaborate and just be together. I mean, it doesn't seem like, wow, that should be a lot, but run some numbers, look at what's out there, and that's pretty really inexpensive, especially if you look at places like Capital Factory and some of the other folks in town. So, like I said, help wanted. Um, we're looking at this one as part of the word. It doesn't mean you're in this room, it doesn't mean you want to do it, but maybe you know somebody. Somebody who has 20 years of engineering experience, you think, man, everybody should hear this guy's opinion. And if I had started my project and I had access to this person's opinion, I would be super happy. Same thing on the visual arts. Somebody who has a very pragmatic view of art and how it can be commercialized, how can it be brought to the public in a very positive way. Same thing on design. You know, I get a lot of ideas, I get a lot of stuff, and it's very easy to kind of gloss over that, but then you get a designer who's talking and starts asking questions and never even thought to ask. Same thing for audio. Audio is super important. We are people who like to experience things in the two strongest senses inside a video game are visual and audio. Last things are marketing. You know, if you're not recognized, you're going to be just one of 150,000 apps from the App Store every year. That's a ridiculous number of people thinking that you need proper marketing for that. And the customer management is a new thing. I actually see people getting shocked over this. <laughs> you go out, you build a product, people like it. The first thing they want to do is go on your farms. You now have a community. Now you need 
you send somebody to manage that community? And that's a skill set. That's not a, uh, that's not, I can just jump in and chat with people thing. I wouldn't even consider myself a good community manager. As a matter of fact, from my experience with dealing with community is I pretty much hate them all. <laughs> and they know it. I'm too practical to play that game. So you need that skill set, and I would like everyone to value that skill set because your community is where your big dollars come in. You know, they have whales in the communities. You've got to find out who they are, identify them, and treat them well. Monetization schemes, if this is done wrong, you will turn off every single person who knows how awesome your product is. If it is done right, you can get a bad product sold really, really well. So we're looking for people who have experience, who've done it wrong, who've done it right, who have kind of worn through them there a couple of times. I would have been over 15 years of experience. There's some folks in here who have that, that era, or two, or three. Yeah, I can't get into four at this point. <laughs> Give it a couple of years. <laughs> so that's pretty much what we're looking for on the incubator. And um, it's funny because I was waiting on that I was going to say this, but I'm going to say it this time. No, I'm not going to say an NBA. And some people are giggling because they know exactly what I'm talking about. The people are getting really confused. A non disclosure act agreement means I don't want to talk about your product. Talking about your product isn't going to do you any harm. As a matter of fact, the only thing it's going to do is help you. Because if I talk to somebody out in this room and be like, hey, I heard about this product, what do you think? And they're going to tell me because it's not my product their actual real opinion. They'll never tell the creator their actual real opinion. It never works that way because you don't want to be mean to somebody's face. And then mean and honest feedback on a product. So then I'm not going to sign an NDA. Am I going to steal your idea? Oh god, now I've heard like 20 ideas in the last three weeks. <laughs> if I keep them all in my head, I'd be lucky. <laughs> also, I want to execute on my products. Like everybody else in this room, I have my idea and I want to execute. That's what I want to do. And of course, if you've been in the industry for more than, like, say, five years or something, you realize it's not about the idea, it's about whether or not you can put it to market. Can you get it out there? Can you get it sold? You know, there was Diablo, and then there was Knox, and then there was Dungeon Siege, and a bunch of other things. Did Blizzard really care that anybody stole, stole their idea? God, no, because they couldn't execute. And you know what? If you look at Blizzard and you're an old gamer, you know that they stole all of their ideas from Might and Magic, Ultimate, and Wizardry. Every single one of the ideas. It's all about execution, people. So I'm going to go on to my second one, which is a lot more fun, a lot more interesting. It's called Captivate. <laughs> I have technology issues. So continue on the theme of connecting people we're going to have a fall conference this year. It's definitely happening. Yeah! Woo! -hoo! Woo -hoo! When I realized a couple of things when I was putting this together and I was thinking about the conference and how we're going to do this, and a lot of other people came to the exact same conclusion, which is great, actually, because that means that it's a good idea. I'm going to crack one. So, games, film, music, we all work together, and we are all consumers of our own content. Um, we're, we're all pretty big, let's just be honest, you know. How many people here own at least a reasonably decent film setup? Yeah, exactly. How many people here are kind of consider themselves an audiophile? I want to see the hands. Yeah, exactly. Um, and pretty much everybody else you've ever met plays games. Because the rule of the United States is something like 280 million people play video games. So, combining that and education, because I think we need to start incorporating education and students into our world, because they're a very important part of it. I came up with this conference idea. All right, so October 6th through 8th at the Palmer Event Center. And if you're an ACL fan, you know that yes, we're gonna have one day overlapping ACL, but that's on purpose. We've talked to them a little bit. And I think it's a really good idea. Because they want to know that kind of someday we will be fatigued day, people might be tired and wanted some place to go, we're gonna be a couple miles down the road. So you can walk between the two. Give yourself a Sunday pass, give yourself a Saturday Sunday pass, or something like that. But for Monday and Tuesday, we're also gonna grab some of their groups. And we're gonna grab, of course, everybody here. Um, 
I'm working with a couple of folks on that. I'm going to try and get our ticketing uh, set up for March. So I would love people to buy tickets. I'm already going through doing the sponsor and exhibit bash, which is interesting, to say the least. I have lots of people we need to talk to. But, like I said, when I was talking about this, I was looking at this convergence part of it. You know, these are four different conferences. Two of them are developer-only conferences, and two of them are public exhibitor conferences. And if you've been to all four, you might actually recognize the scenes from them. So I may not be doing <laughs> um, on, Right over here, we have South by Southwest Gaming last year. This was the Firefall display. Over here, we have E3. These are game devs.